Interest Rate Swap In finance, an interest rate swap IRS, is an interest rate derivative IRD. It involves exchange of interest rates between two parties. In particular it is a linear IRD and one of the most liquid benchmark products. It has associations with forward rate agreements FRAs, and with zero coupon swaps ZCSs. In its December 2014 statistics release, the Bank for International Settlements reported that interest rate swaps were the largest component of the global OTC derivative market, representing 60%, with the notional amount outstanding in OTC interest rate swaps of $381 trillion, and the gross market value of $14 trillion. Interest rate swaps can be traded as an index through the FTSE MTS index. Interest Rate Swaps General Description An interest rate swaps, IRS's, effective description is a derivative contract, agreed between two counterparties, which specifies the nature of an exchange of payments benchmarked against an interest rate index. The most common IRS is a fixed for floating swap, whereby one party will make payments to the other based on an initially agreed fixed rate of interest to receive back payments based on a floating interest rate index. Each of these series of payments is termed a leg, so a typical IRS has both a fixed and a floating leg. The floating index is commonly an interbank offered rate IBOR, of specific tenor in the appropriate currency of the IRS, for example LIBOR in USD, GBP, Euribor in Year, or STIBOR in SEC. To completely determine any IRS a number of parameters must be specified for each leg. Each currency has its own standard market conventions regarding the frequency of payments, the day count conventions and the end of month rule. Extended Description As OTC instruments, interest rate swaps IRSs, can be customized in a number of ways and can be structured to meet the specific needs of the counterparties. For example, payment dates could be irregular, the notional of the swap could be amortized over time, reset dates, or fixing dates, of the floating rate could be irregular, mandatory break clauses may be inserted into the contract, etc. A common form of customization is often present in new issue swaps where the fixed leg cash flows are designed to replicate those cash flows received as the coupons on a purchased bond. The interbank market however, only has a few standardized types. There is no consensus on the scope of naming convention for different types of IRS. Even a wide description of IRS contracts only includes those whose legs are denominated in the same currency. It is generally accepted that swaps of similar nature whose legs are denominated in different currencies are called cross-currency basis swaps. Swaps which are determined on a floating rate index in one currency but whose payments are denominated in another currency are called quantos. In traditional interest rate derivative terminology an IRS is a fixed leg versus floating leg derivative contract referencing an EBOR as the floating leg. If the floating leg is redefined to be an overnight index, such as ONIA, SONIA, FOIS, etc. then this type of swap is generally referred to as an overnight indexed swap. OIS. Some financial literature may classify OISAs as a subset of IRSs and other literature may recognize a distinct separation. Dot. Fixed leg versus fixed leg swaps are rare, and generally constitute a form of specialized loan agreement. Float leg versus float leg swaps are much more common. These are typically termed, single currency, basis swaps, ESPSs. The legs on ESPSs will necessarily be different interest indexes, such as 1M, LIBOR, 3M LIBOR, 6M LIBOR, SONIA, etc. The pricing of these swaps requires a spread often quoted in basis points to be added to one of the floating legs in order to satisfy value equivalence. Uses Interest rate swaps are used to hedge against or speculate on changes in interest rates. Interest rate swaps are also used speculatively by hedge funds or other investors who expect a change in interest rates or the relationships between them. Traditionally, fixed income investors who expected rates to fall would purchase cash bonds, whose value increased as rates fell. Today, investors with a similar view could enter a floating for fixed interest rate swap, 
as rates fall, investors would pay a lower floating rate in exchange for the same fixed rate. Dot. Interest rate swaps are also popular for the arbitrage opportunities they provide. Varying levels of creditworthiness means that there is often a positive quality spread differential that allows both parties to benefit from an interest rate swap. The interest rate swap market in USD is closely linked to the Eurodollar futures market which trades among others at the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. Valuation and Pricing IRSs are bespoke financial products whose customization can include changes to payment dates, notional changes, such as those in amortized IRSs, accrual period adjustment and calculation convention changes, such as a day count convention of 30 360 e to act 360 or act 365. A vanilla IRS is the term used for standardized IRSs. Typically these will have none of the above customizations, and instead exhibit constant notional throughout, implied payment and accrual dates and benchmark calculation conventions by currency. A vanilla IRS is also characterized by one leg being fixed and the second leg floating referencing an EBOR index. The net present value PV, of a vanilla IRS can be computed by determining the PV of each fixed leg and floating leg separately and summing. For pricing a mid-market IRS the underlying principle is that the two legs must have the same value initially, see further under rational pricing. Calculating the fixed leg requires discounting all of the known cash flows by an appropriate discount factor. Where n, backslash displace tile n, is the notional, r, backslash displace tile r, is the fixed rate, n1, backslash displace tile n1, is the number of payments, di, backslash displace tile d sub i, is the decimalized day count fraction of the accrual in the ith period, and vi, backslash displace tile v sub i, is the discount factor associated with the payment date of the ith period. Calculating the floating leg is a similar process replacing the fixed rate with forecast index rates. Where n2, backslash displace tile n2, is the number of payments of the floating leg and rj, backslash displace tile r sub j, are the forecast EBOR index rates of the appropriate currency. Dot. The PV of the IRS from the perspective of receiving the fixed leg is then. Historically IRSs were valued using discount factors derived from the same curve used to forecast the EBOR rates. This has been called self-discounted. Some early literature described some incoherence introduced by that approach and multiple banks were using different techniques to reduce them. It became more apparent with the 2007-2012 global financial crisis that the approach was not appropriate, and alignment towards discount factors associated with physical collateral of the IRSs was needed. Post-crisis, to accommodate credit risk. The now standard pricing framework is the multi-curve framework where forecast TBOR rates and discount factors exhibit disparity. Note that the economic pricing principle is unchanged, leg values are still identical at initiation. See Financial Economics section Derivative Pricing for further context. Here, overnight index swap OIS, rates are typically used to derive discount factors, since that index is the standard inclusion on credit support annexes, CSAs, to determine the rate of interest payable on collateral for IRS contracts. As regards the rates forecast, since the basis spread between LIBOR rates of different maturities widened during the crisis, forecast curves are generally constructed for each LIBOR tenor used in floating rate derivative legs. Regarding the curve build, c. Under the old framework a single self-discounted curve was bootstrapped, i.e. solved such that it exactly returned the observed prices of selected instruments, IRSs, with FR rays in the short end, with the build proceeding sequentially, date-wise, through these instruments. Under the new framework, the various curves are best fitted to observed market prices, as a curve set, one curve for discounting, one for each EBOR tenor forecast curve, and the build is then based on quotes for IRSs and OISs. Here, 
Since the observed average overnight rate is swapped for the EBOR rate over the same period, the most liquid tenor in that market, and the EBOR IRSs are in turn discounted on the OIS curve, the problem entails a non-linear system, where all curve points are solved at once, and specialized iterative methods are usually employed, very often a modification of Newton's method. Other tenors curves can be solved in a second stage, bootstrap style. Under both frameworks, the following apply. I, maturities for which rates are solved directly are referred to as pillar points, these correspond to the input instrument maturities, other rates are interpolated, often using hermetic splines. 2, the objective function, prices must be exactly returned, as described. 3, the penalty function will weigh, that forward rates are positive, to be arbitrage free, and curve smoothness, both, in turn, a function of the interpolation method. 4. The initial estimate, usually, the most recently solved curve set. V. All that need be stored are the solved spot rates for the pillars, and the interpolation rule. A CSA could allow for collateral, and hence interest payments on that collateral, in any currency. To address this banks include in their curve set, a USD discount curve, sometimes called the basis curve, to be used for discounting local EBOR trades with USD collateral. This curve is built by solving for observed, mark-to-market, cross-currency swap rates, where the local EBOR is swapped for USD LIBOR with USD collateral as underpin, a pre-solved, external, USD LIBOR curve is therefore an input into the curve build, the basis curve may be solved in the third stage. Each currency's curve set will then include a local currency discount curve and its USD discounting basis curve. As required, a third currency discount curve, i.e. for local trades collateralized in a currency other than local or USD, or any other combination, can then be constructed from the two basis curves, i.e. of the local currency and third currency, as combined via an arbitrage relationship known as FX forward invariance. The complexities of modern curve sets mean that there may not be discount factors available for a specific EBOR index curve. These curves are known as forecast-only curves and only contain the information of a forecast EBOR index rate for any future date. Some designs constructed with a discount-based methodology mean forecast EBOR index rates are implied by the discount factors inherent to that curve. To price the mid-market or power rate, S, backslash displaced tiles of an IRS, defined by the value of fixed rate R, backslash displaced tile R, that gives a net PV of zero, the above formula is rearranged to. In the event old methodologies are applied the discount factors VK, backslash displaced tile V sub K, can be replaced with the self-discounted values XK, backslash displaced tile X sub K, and the above reduces to. In both cases, the PV of a general swap can be expressed exactly with the following intuitive formula. Where A, backslash displaced tile A, is the so-called annuity factor A equals I equals 1 N 1 DIVI, backslash displaced tile A equals backslash sum underscore I equals 1 N 1 D sub I V sub I, or A equals I equals 1 N 1 DI XI backslash display style a equals backslash sum underscore i equals 1 n 1 d sub i x sub i, for self-discounting. This shows that the PV of an IRS is roughly linear in the swap power rate, though small non-linearities arise from the codependency of the swap rate with the discount factors in the annuity sum. Dot. During the life of the swap the same valuation technique is used, but since, over time, both the discounting factors and the forward rates change, the PV of the swap will deviate from its initial value. Therefore, the swap will be an asset to one party and a liability to the other. The way these changes in value are reported is the subject of years 39 for jurisdictions following IFRS, and FAS 133 for US GAAP. Swaps are marked to market by debt security traders to visualize their inventory at a certain time. As regards P&L attribution, and hedging, the new framework adds complexity in that the trader's position is now potentially affected by numerous instruments not obviously related to the trade in question. Risks 
Interest rate swaps expose users to many different types of financial risk. Predominantly they expose the user to market risks and specifically interest rate risk. The value of an interest rate swap will change as market interest rates rise and fall. In market terminology this is often referred to as delta risk. Dot interest rate swaps also exhibit gamma risk whereby their delta risk increases or decreases as market interest rates fluctuate. See Greeks, finance, value at risk hashtag computation methods, value at risk hashtag var risk management. Other specific types of market risk that interest rate swaps have exposure to are basis risks, where various EBOR tenor indexes can deviate from one another, and reset risks, where the publication of specific tenor EBOR indexes are subject to daily fluctuation. Uncollateralized interest rate swaps, those executed bilaterally without a CSA in place, expose the trading counterparties to funding risks and credit risks. Funding risks because the value of the swap might deviate to become so negative that it is unaffordable and cannot be funded. Credit risks because the respective counterparty, for whom the value of the swap is positive, will be concerned about the opposing counterparty defaulting on its obligations. Collateralized interest rate swaps, on the other hand, expose the users to collateral risks. Here, depending upon the terms of the CSA, the type of posted collateral that is permitted might become more or less expensive due to other extraneous market movements. Dot. Credit and funding risks still exist for collateralized trades but to a much lesser extent. Regardless, due to regulations set out in the Basel III regulatory frameworks, trading interest rate derivatives commands a capital usage. The consequence of this is that, dependent upon their specific nature, interest rate swaps might command more capital usage, and this can deviate with market movements. Thus capital risks are another concern for users. Given these concerns, banks will typically calculate a credit valuation adjustment, as well as other X valuation adjustments, which then incorporate these risks into the instrument value. Reputation risks also exist. The mis-selling of swaps, overexposure of municipalities to derivative contracts, and EBOR manipulation are examples of high-profile cases where trading interest rate swaps has led to a loss of reputation and fines by regulators. Hedging interest rate swaps can be complicated and relies on numerical processes of well-designed risk models to suggest reliable benchmark trades that mitigate all market risks. Although, see the discussion above re-hedging in a multi-curve environment. Dot the other, aforementioned risks must be hedged using other systematic processes. Quotation and market making. Ice swap rate. ICE swap rate replaced the rate formerly known as ISDAFIX in 2015. Swap rate benchmark rates are calculated using eligible prices and volumes for specified interest rate derivative products. The prices are provided by trading venues in accordance with a waterfall methodology. The first level of the waterfall, level 1, uses eligible, executable prices and volumes provided by regulated, electronic, trading venues. Multiple, randomized snapshots of market data are taken during a short window before calculation. This enhances the benchmark's robustness and reliability by protecting against attempted manipulation and temporary aberrations in the underlying market. Market making. The market making of IRSs is an involved process involving multiple tasks, curve construction with reference to interbank markets, individual derivative contract pricing, risk management of credit, cash and capital. The cross disciplines required include quantitative analysis and mathematical expertise, disciplined and organized approach towards profits and losses, and coherent psychological and subjective assessment of financial market information and price taker analysis. The time-sensitive nature of markets also creates a pressurized environment. Many tools and techniques have been designed to improve efficiency of market making in a drive to efficiency and consistency. Controversy In June 1988 the Audit Commission was tipped off by someone working on the swaps desk of Goldman Sachs that the London borough of Hammersmith and Fulham had a massive exposure to interest rate swaps. 
When the commission contacted the council, the chief executive told them not to worry as everybody knows that interest rates are going to fall. The treasurer thought the interest rate swaps were a nice little earner. The commission's controller, Howard Davis, realized that the council had put all of its positions on interest rates going down and ordered an investigation. Dot. By January 1989 the commission obtained legal opinions from two Queen's Council. Although they did not agree, the commission preferred the opinion that it was ultra vires for councils to engage in interest rate swaps, EA. That they had no lawful power to do so. Moreover, interest rates had increased from 8% to 15%. The auditor and the commission then went to court and had the contracts declared void. Appeals all the way up to the House of Lords failed in Hazel v. Hammersmith and Fulham LBC, the five banks involved lost millions of pounds. Many other local authorities had been engaging in interest rate swaps in the 1980s. This resulted in several cases in which the banks generally lost their claims for compound interest on debts to councils, finalized in West Deutschland's Bank Eros and Trial v. Islington London Borough Council. Banks did, however, recover some funds where the derivatives were in the money for the councils, EA, an asset showing a profit for the council, which it now had to return to the bank, not a debt. The controversy surrounding interest rate swaps reached a peak in the UK during the financial crisis where banks sold unsuitable interest rate hedging products on a large scale to SMEs. The practice has been widely criticized by the media and parliament, 